Hello everyone, welcome back to the Vinuesa Lab. Here today we will finish our series on the transformers and we will focus on some further applications in more realistic scenarios and with more complex data. First of all, we will have a small recap uh, on the information that we retrieved on the past videos. Fundamentally, in the first video, we specified the nature of the transformer. It's a multi-layer architecture, originally thought for, for language translation or for language uh, text processing. However, in the past year has been recently used for physical problems and the novelties when studying really complex systems are, are really common in the state of art models nowadays. Um, one of the main peculiarities, as we mentioned, is the contextual learning capability of the, of the transformer due the attention mechanism. However, we already mentioned other attention mechanisms such as the ease attention, which one can find more specia specialities of this mechanism in the archive paper. And the other peculiarity of this, of this model is the embedding. Uh, the embedding has multiple possibilities. It originally was a positional encoding, thought for language translation, as we mentioned. However, other embeddings, such as the time-to-vector that we mentioned on the past video, and uh, the time-to-space embedding, a novelty uh, mechanism that we implemented in our transformer, are, have shown really great potential in retrieving temporal dependencies and also spatial dependencies, uh, creating a pseudo-input that later is fed into the transformer. The properties is that, that we mentioned is that the transformer, it's, it is known as to be a universal approximator of the probability distribution function of our data. So one can think of the attention mechanism as a push, push forward of the, of the measure, meaning that we are mapping the measure of the data uh, consequently through the training procedure uh, with the idea of converging into the empirical or a prior measure. It is also important to, to mention that the attention mechanism, apart from push, uh, pushing forward the measure, it's also retrieving this the spatial and temporal dependencies in, in the case that we built our matrix uh, as we did in the past. Um, concatenating information in the column would be the temporal and along the rows uh, we will have the different features or spatial uh, coordinates. Um, it is important also to mention that in the past videos we focused in really canonical simple results of a chaotic system such as the Lorentz system which is a, it's a simplified model for, for atmospherical convection done by Edward Lorentz and a further uh, study that we did was the low-order model for turbulence by Jeff Moelis. This one was, was a bit more uh, complicated due to the fact that we had uh, nine uh, equations on our differential equation, and this made it a bit more complicated to retrieve the dependencies between these different dynamics. Diving into our study for today, we will focus on a, on a more realistic and more complex uh, case, such as a nuclear reactor. This is a generation for nuclear reactor, um, which utilizes salt coolant and other fuels in order to um, work. In this particular case, we have um, a transformer that will take our input X to X hat. Um, as we did in past videos, our matrix X is formed by a time delay. In this particular uh, problem, it's 128 and 256 for the self-attention. More details on the structure of these transformers and the inputs that we fit into the models are retrieved on the original attention paper and the supplement material. And the output, uh, as original, we are doing a sequence to one transformer. It's the next time step with the 13 variables. It's important to mention that in here we are not working with experimental data. We are working with a model that has has been numerically approximated, and we are only studying the dependencies of what is known to be the 13 most important variables of this model. Diving directly into the results, uh, not only is important to have a good uh, temporal prediction of our signal, but also to retrieve the main properties of this signal. This signal may have uh, different peaks on the power spectral density and also different uh, probability distributions and correlations between these variables. In order to assess this, this model, we first uh, take to account the probability density function of the core flow. Uh, in the left, in Cyan, one has the, the easy attention performance, while on the right we have the self-attention. It's important to remember the colors, Cyan for the easy attention and yellow for the self-attention. It is clear already how the self-attention, it's a it's well known to say that it's hallucinating on the tails of the distribution, meaning that it's creating um, an inferring time, it's creating data that is not originally supposed to be there, meaning that the probability measure is not uh, completely approximated correctly. However, the easy attention, as one can see, matches really good the tails of the distribution, and the different peaks of the, of the distribution are also well captured, however, a bit uh, translated. Diving into the power spectral density of our, of our signal of the core flow, uh, remember that the cyan is the easy attention and the yellow is the 
self-attention. One can see that the self-attention is able to localize the peak of the, of the signal. However, the amplitude, the power of this uh, frequency is not well captured. The easy attention, on the other hand, captures the amplitude of the of the signal of, the, of this frequency, however, the frequency is a bit translated. It means that one can see that the peak is uh, shifted to the right, um, but retrieving still the evolution of this, of this power spectral density, meaning the slope between the first peak and the second peak shows a, a similar uh, rate of, of um, evolution. Furthermore, if we want to approach more complex systems, uh, one needs to leverage other kinds of models, such as the autoencoder, canonically just using the MSC on the loss function. In this particular case, we use the variational autoencoder, which is a more complex model than the autoencoder, where we implement another term on the loss function, parameterized by the beta coefficient, which is in, in charge of disentangling the latent space, meaning that the covariance matrix will be ideally the determinant equal to one, uh, with, will carry uh, orthogonality between uh, the, the latent variables, meaning all of these uh, la latent variables on, on the reduced dimensionally space will be orthogonal between them, they will be linearly independent. Uh, diving directly into this model, uh, what we fit into the variational autoencoder, it's a field with uh, 25,000 time steps with two velocity fields, meaning the stream-wise velocity fluctuations and the vertical fluctuations. And this 2D um, field, it's at 20, 288 grid points on the X direction and 96 on the Y direction. The main focus of this autoencoder, the variational autoencoder, is to reduce the dimensionality, mainly spatial dimensionality, uh, to 10. In this particular case, we chose 10 latent variables because it's the ones that have the best reconstruction error when uh, decodifying. However, this can be parameterized along the training. It is, it is really important to make this uh, spatial embedding because later we will implement the transforming in the latent space to do temporal predictions. So would, one could retain um, much, many more dependencies and at the same time it's much easier to interpret this low order system. Once the decodification is done, we will study what are the capabilities of the different attention mechanisms in the physical space, not only in temporal predictions, but also in statistical properties. First of all, as one can see here, we have the ease attention on the left and the self attention on the right. The self attention is capable of predicting up to 100 time steps, while the ease attention starts diverging from the reality much earlier. Um, still to the naked eye, both of the predictions seem physical. They still are producing vortexes and the different fluctuation regime, uh, regions seem accurate. However, as we mentioned, in here we are comparing the reconstruction energy against a ground truth, meaning there is an imposed reality, there is an imposed ground truth trajectory, and the self-attention seems to retrieve these dependencies with the, with the ground truth much further. However, as we mentioned in past videos, it's really important to assess uh, further metrics, uh, not only L2 norm, or reconstruction errors, but also to assess the capabilities to retrieve statistical properties. In this particular case, uh, the ease attention that one can see here, it's um, capable of um, predicting the fluctuations when fixing an X um, plane much better than the, the self-attention. The self-attention seems to be able to recognize the peaks, however, the amplitude, similar to the nuclear reactor case, are um, underestimated. Uh, for the second peak, it's overestimated, while the easy attention, in this particular case, uh, further and more complex implementation of this attention, which is the cross easy attentions that we will dive into later, it's uh, capable of not only retrieving the position of the, of the peaks of the fluctuations, but also the amplitudes of them, meaning that in, even if we diverge from the reality earlier than the self-attention, our trajectory, our pseudo-trajectory, will stay infinitely close to another realistic trajectory, and in principle, one could leverage this data uh, in inference time to study the properties of the main case, of, in this case of this turbulent flow. Uh, diving into the conclusions and paying a bit more attention in the cross each attention that we just mentioned um, quickly in the past slide, the, the self-attention is the canonical implemented by attention is all you need. It leverages the softmax to rank the different dependencies um, outputted by the, by the queries and the keys. It was also introduced in the first video that the attention matrix is no more than a transform covariance matrix, so it assumes the covariance matrix to be the best um, correlation matrix, which canonically this is uh, supposed to be done like that. When one, when one wants to study correlations between different data, normally we leverage the inner product matrix, the covariance matrix. However, the, what Google proposes is to implement a transform covariance matrix with the possibility of multiplying different attention elements with a local matrix. On the other hand, the is attention 
uh, was liberated from these constraints of the inner product and from the constraints of the queries and the keys. In this particular case, we will only focus on the cross is attention, which is no more than a further extension of the is attention in both sides, meaning we have a left and right attention matrix. So we leverage the multi-head strategy in both spatial and temporal dependencies. And in here we have the continuous um, expression of the cross attention in kernel shape. This once again seems and resembles to the kernel expressions that we mentioned on the universal approximator for uh, neural operators. So one can think of the attention mechanism in general as just a, a kernel integral. Uh, in this case, it's a kernel of size one, so it will not be considered a convolution because we will need a window of bigger than one. But still, the, the, the connections and the resemblance with other canonical models are straightforward. Mentioning more theoretical approaches, uh, we, it was already mentioned in the first slide that the attention mechanism is a push forward of the, of the, of the measure. So by different iterations along the epochs, the convergence to the, to the original data measured uh, should be achieved with a good parameterization. Um, it is the main mechanism for um, extracting context is in the attention. Is in the, attention. the self attention is still retrieving this context, um, and it seems that this is the, the main focus when, uh, when expanding the, the prediction a long time. As we saw in the past case, the self attention is capable of um, elongating the temporal prediction when comparing to the ground truth, and it seems really reasonable because if one keeps um, feeding context, feeding data that it's uh, connected to the trajectory along different inferring times, one can also soft out the, the, cha the chaotic property of uh, meaning that it's getting saturated through the error. Uh, so by inputting new uh, and clear data, one could hope for a longer, for a longer prediction. However, there is a tension due to the fact that it's liberated of this uh, transform covariance uh, assumption. It's capable of building a better local basis and, and then it's capable of predicting better further measures such as statistical, such as the PDF, fluctuations, which are really hard and really difficult to, to reconstruct. So one can think of the multi-head multi -head attention as a local basis search, meaning we will, we will split our pseudo domain in different, in different subdomains, and then we will extract local basis from each of the subdomains. Uh, finally, the comparison between the is attention and the self attention is clear. The self attention is able to do a longer um, temporal prediction when comparing to a ground truth, while the is attention is capable of creating more accurate pseudo trajectories due to the fact that the statistical properties are better retrieved. Diving into the bibliography, if one wants to extend the, the information that was mentioned on these videos, it's really important to visit the Transformers, our universal in context learning. This is uh, the paper where they mention the capability of the Transformer to approximate universally the measure of the, of the data. It is also important to, main, to visit uh, similar papers, however, assessing different models and also introducing different analytical studies uh, to the models, such as the neural operator. Um, also, if one wants to get more insight on the beta variational autoencoder, uh, we recommend visiting the Hami Reza paper where they do a study also really similar on a turbulent flow. They do a, a, parameteri a parameterized study on the beta variational autoencoder to see which is the best architecture for the reconstruction of the original field. Um, even more, the um, all attention is attention is all you need. The original paper of the attention mechanism uh, produced by Google. In here, one has the main information regarding the attention mechanism, the softmax, and the positional encoding, which is the original embedding for the transformer. And lastly, and least important, the um, the is attention paper, where one can see the different intrinsics and the different results for for the problems, as we only presented some of the uh, simple and more important results. And also, one can see specific details on the on the building of these models if one wants to extend these studies for for their data once again thank you very much for your time one can visit the github repository uh, in here we have all of the transformer architectures that we've mentioned on this video we also have the beta variational autoencoder for this uh, urban phone, urban flow case and please uh, feel free to comment on the on the youtube video please and give us your inf insight and further questions that you have Thank you very much for your time. See you.